What is going on guys, Vlad here with AsolusPLC.com. If you enjoy videos on PLC programming, HMI development, or any other application development for industrial automation, consider hitting this subscribe button down below on your screen. And of course, the notification bell to receive the latest videos that I will be putting out on this channel. Without any further delay, let's get into today's video. All right, so today we're talking about ladder logic basics. It is a video that I wanted to make for quite a bit of time and I've dove deeper into some of the other subjects on instructions but I wanted to come back to the basics and answer some of the more fundamental questions that a lot of you guys had in the comment sections as well as the forums so ladder logic what is it what does it do what exactly does it represent how can one learn ladder logic so here I have my PLC which is essentially an Allen Bradley 1769 L24 ER processor and it is running what's called a uh, studio 5000 environment but ultimately it translates whatever I uh, describe in the Studio 5000 environment in Ladder Logic into a machine programming uh, language, which uh, at the end of the day is going to be comprised of zeros and ones, as you've probably studied that in school. But ultimately Ladder Logic allows you to coherently represent a certain instruction in order for the machine to understand that. But at the same time, the advantage is also that it's very easy for humans to understand and ultimately it is the ride from the past which was essentially ice cube relays so we're going to look at a couple of examples so here I have a series of rungs and a rung is essentially just one bar of your ladder and as you can see here it looks if we zoom in even uh, even more then you can see that traditional kind of structure of a ladder with uh, two bars on the sides and of course one bar going across so we call a rung which is just one single bar going across and within this one ladder block you can essentially have what's called logic that is going to be executed by your system now in ladder logic uh, things are somewhat simple so you always have this number in front of the rung and the logic is executed sequentially meaning that the program executes rung zero then it executes rung one rung two rung three so on and so forth now in each rung you can have diverse instructions and these could be as simple as you'd like as and as complex as uh, you require for your particular application so here what we have is a series of inputs and of course i can edit the ladder to my will and let's let's actually open a completely new program so we're going to create a new routine i don't want you to uh, get too focused on that for now what a, re a routine is so basics of a ladder, we can give it just any name and we're going to go into it. So it's going to have just a blank piece of rung. So it's going to have just rung zero in it. Let's just double click the routine and we can add as many rungs as we'd like. As you can see here, I have this rung button and I can add more rungs. And of course, by hitting the delete key, I can delete the rungs. So Ultimately, rung logic, like I said, represents a series of different bits. And here in Allen Bradley, this may be different in different different environments. So, you, of course, you have Siemens, you have Omron, you have Mitsubishi, you have a whole range of different PLC platforms. But here in Allen Bradley, this is what the inter interface looks like, and we can use different instructions, which are represented by building blocks right here. As you can see, I can click on those building blocks, and they would appear on the screen. Now, what is the purpose of ladder logic? Well, ladder logic is always essentially uh, distributed into a series of inputs or certain conditions, and then you have certain outputs or outcomes of said conditions. So on the left side of your ladder, uh, I might be, I guess, mirrored on your screen, but essentially on this uh, here, I'm going to put an instruction here at the bottom going to my favorites and put on so on this side you have a series of conditions so i can put you know five different conditions for a single output so if these conditions execute to be true then the output is also going to execute now on the output side on this uh right side of your screen we can have different things that execute and you can have them be timers, you can have them be bits, so on and so forth. So essentially, once again, ladder logic represents in certain inputs or conditions, and then certain outputs or outcomes of those conditions. Now, the way ladder logic works is that depending on how you structure your rung, you can allow either all conditions to be required to be true in order to execute, or certain conditions to be true uh, in order to execute. And let me demonstrate that particular feature. So for example, here we have a retentative 
repetitive timer on as you can see by the label don't uh, read too much into the instruction it is explained in a different video we're going to skip that version of parallels i apologize about that but essentially there's going to be four instructions in this case if they are placed in series with each other just like an electrical circuit you would need all four of those conditions to be true in order for the retentative timer to be um, executed and essentially this translates if you're familiar with some of the other programming log uh, languages then this is an and instruction so this one and this one and this one and this one need to be true in order for that to execute you can also create all kinds of different uh, other scenarios in binary logic for example if you have this these instructions instead of being in series they would be in parallel then of course this would create an or instruction so the current you have to always think of the current going through so the current can go either this way or this way or this way or this last way in order to activate this retentative timer on instruction so once again the ladder logic structure is just a way to represent a uh, programming language but at the end of the day you can do everything that you would do in a normal C or Java um, programming language, but I guess more on the hardware level side, so more C-like than you cannot create, for example, uh, classes, although you can create what's called UDT instances, which is a different topic in its own uh, regard, so, but you cannot necessarily uh, create UDTs, but you can still create pointers, you can create arrays, you can create uh, the different structures that you're used to in C. You can have for loops. So if we go into some of these other instructions, then for example, I can do a for loop and uh, the for loop is going to be very similar to what you're used to in C, but it will be represented in a slightly different fashion. So the layout might confuse certain pra programmers at first, but it does come down to the same exact principle. Now, why do we use ladder logic? And I've mentioned this a little bit at the beginning, but in, in the past, you've had these relay based schemes. So you had, for example, uh, an elevator system or a pump system that would use with a series of relays. And these relays would be tied into, for example, buttons, they would be tied to uh, coils of relays. So you had different relays that would place that would be placed, for example, in series, and then you'd had some or instructions here, you know, if it's for example, if the system is bypassed and there's some kind of a manual button, then you can force the system to run, but it wouldn't bypass certain other things. And then this would be, for example, your, um, I don't know, elevator motor um, system. And this would be like, for example, this uh, maintenance bypass. Don't read too much into the instruction themselves. I just want to give you a, an overview. And this would be, for example, the if the normal operation is true, so normal operation relay is true, so everything is good, it's operating normally, uh, elevator down, so somebody requested it to go down, and here, of course, you can also create, you know, more, uh, more conditions. So if it, it was called to go down or called to go up, there would be a relay which energizes at that point in time and essentially creates a complex logic. And you can see how um, as you develop a program in ladder logic, it, be, it can become a very, very complex. But at the end of the day, it comes back to the same principles that you've used uh, in other programming languages. Now, what's also very important to notice is that ladder logic ties in a very well with some external hardware. So here on the left side, I have what's called a controller organizer, which is proprietary to um, Alan Bradley, but different platforms have their own interface. And essentially, I can interface different hardware on this side here. And you will notice that I have different controllers and essentially the tags get populated for you within a lot of logic environments in order for you to program for those specific pieces of hardware. So, of course, here, if we want to look at uh, an input, an analog input card, sorry, a digital input card, then we will notice that if we raise this pane a little bit, that it goes back to a control logic rack for input i and if we go back to our controller scope tags let me just go up here so tags are essentially bits of data that we can use within a ladder logic programming and here's for i 
And if I expand this, then I can use this data within my ladder logic program. And here, for example, we have this data zero. I can copy this in and I can use that within my tag. Um, I don't want you to get, I guess, too confused by that, but essentially, Ladder logic is also specific to the hardware that is being used for. And a lot of times the different PLC platforms will have specifics in their particular ladder logic in order to accommodate that data. So that's pretty much all there is to ladder logic. And once again, you can very easily reapply certain things. So for example, if here you use data zero, here you can use data one, and this is going to be your elevator motor two, for example. So you have a second shaft. So it makes it very easy and very visual to troubleshoot. The other advantage, of course, is that once you have a running controller, you can see the, sig the signals go on and off. So it's very different than a traditional C program where you, for example, you download your program and then you have to have some kind of a debugger that sends you the code back. This is already built into most ladder logic programs and it allows you to very easily visualize what is going on in your system. So here, for example, if we are in maintenance, then you will immediately see this uh, button lit up. It's going to be in this uh, iconic color green and you'd see the elevator mo motor move, for example, and you can double check if that is the case in the real world. So that's pretty much all there is to ladder logic. Like I said, it, it executes sequentially as well. So we can keep adding rungs as you desire and the controller is going to read them one by one and then it's going to start all over again from zero all the way down and from zero all the way down and it's just going to repeat that process and of course i didn't mention all of the instructions but you can find a lot of my videos in some of the previous ones that i've released on how to use certain instructions how you can reapply them to your own ladder logic programs and i'll see you guys thank you guys for watching if you have any questions and i'll see you next time thank you guys so much for watching my content if you have any questions on this topic make sure to leave them in the comment section below and if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video if you've enjoyed it that would mean absolutely the world to me and if you have any suggestions for the channel what kind of hardware software i should be covering then make sure to leave that down there as well see you next time Take care. Bye.